7564, who's a good young player coming along. Well, look who she beat in the second round. One of her younger sisters in three sets, and that was a nightmare for her. They hate playing each other. And then she had a very good performance against uh, Mary Jo Fernandez, who was a little bit out of sorts yesterday, but still, that is a tremendous result. I mean, Mary Jo was definitely the favorite player. Not very much of a breeze. Might pick up later in the afternoon, they say. 24 degrees Celsius. And we begin our first semifinal today with Manuela to serve. Linda Hinshaw from Richmond, Indiana, in the chair. She has a canopy over her. It's a little bit hotter down on this court. It's sunk somewhat. Beautiful center court. It's just a, it's just one of the best, this one. And there's always a difficulty for the lesser player, especially if they start off serving as this first game. They're bound to be a little bit tense. Well, the 16 matches that they've played, Aleva Franier has won only six sets. like Steffi Graf, you're so happy to have done it, but it takes so much out of you, both emotionally and physically, that it's very hard to get your mindset to win another one. Especially when you have to chase Graf's forehand for a couple of hours out there in a hot center court. Oh. Speaking of that forehand, Steffi Graf opens up by breaking serve, leading one none. Already 15 love, then 30 love. Steffi Graf is not only a player with a lethal forehand, she plays very quickly. Certainly doesn't waste any time in getting started. It'll stop there for some people in the stands who haven't quite got into their seats yet. It's a lady in a hurry. Must have a bunch of other appointments for the rest of the afternoon, Rod. Does not fool around. Is that a way to disrupt her, Virginia? Slow her down? Well, I, you can. I mean, I think. Uh, if you think back to when Steffi first was on the scene, she was it's so quick in her matches, so it would be a race like 35 minutes for a whole match. Game graph. This one might go that long. When she used to just come out, this was when she was very young and uninhibited, she'd just come out whacking forehands all over the place, and uh, the matches would be over in such a hurry. And finally, the players started thinking, hey, we've got to slow her down. So it is a bit of a tactic, but they can't throw themselves off as well. Hot. 15. Good first serve that time by Manuela Maleva Frenier. Gives her her first point. She'll feel a little, little <laughs> bit better, marginally better. like that it's not really it's too serious it's when you start really missing balls that you make compensations on your game and just watching these two players in a rally like that you see 
What beautiful grand strokes they both have. I thought that Steffi has been actually going for her forehand a little bit more this uh, week. And the result of that is maybe she might miss a few, but it means that she hits the ball a little bit earlier. And if we've ever criticized about anything, is that she's a little late hitting that forehand. Maybe late, Virginia, but certainly very effective. She's, uh, as you said, she's always hit that forehand late. It's amazing that she does it and does it so well. I've always thought it's her hands that come through so fast and well that save her all the, and all her shots. there of Maleva missing her first serve and being immediately in big trouble. She's going to have to get a lot of first serves in, stop Graf from jumping on her second delivery. 40-30. Trails 2-1 in the first set. Brock leads James to one. We are back. Steffi Graf serving. It is Love 15. Graf leading 2-1. Opening set. Just a little bit of mistiming on the backhand side. I was amused in the press conference yesterday. A German journalist asked Steffi whether she was using her topspin backhand more. He thought she was. She said, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Only when I have to on top on topspin passing shots. But she was very adamant that, I mean, in fact, what she was really saying is, I don't care. You know, I'm just doing what I want to do out there. And don't worry about it. but it sure was a very nice reflexive backhand slice down the line as we take another look at that. And she almost had to sort of lurch and lean into that, but made a good shot by hitting the ball well in front of her, something she doesn't often do on the backhand side. Those points have been heartbreakers for Maleva because she played the ball so well. First, she was beaten by, you know, a one-off shot, and that one was the net that helped Steffi. 30 all. Oh! 40, 30. Graf serving very, very hard today. Forty thirty. Game ball. Steffi Graf holds and leads three one in the opening set against Manuela Maleva Frenier. Three one. 
That forehand of Virginia just does so much damage. You're on the run from start to finish. It really, it really keeps an opponent off balance all the time. I mean, Manuel is playing absolutely fine, but not making too much impression here. Yet another good rally, but going Steffi's way. You know, it's so hard for Manuela to, even though she knows she's playing well, it's so hard to think positively about a match against Steffi because you have to work so hard and you still don't really know the solution to winning points. Oh. I think unless you can hit the ball so hard and hit it right in that backhand corner and get it away from her forehand, uh, the chances aren't too good. Oh. Perhaps, you know. uh, yeah, excuse me, you have to hope that she'll make some unforced errors off the forehand, but uh, well, that doesn't happen too often. No, that, that's uh, about the only way you're going to get points is when Steffi makes an error, or as you say, if you can really exploit coming in deep and chipping on the backhand side and sit camping out at the net. But how often do you get an opportunity to come in? She hits the ball so hard and deep. Also, I'm sure she must have just so much confidence against a player that she's beaten 16 consecutive times. But it gives her the luxury that uh, she can go for something and if it isn't quite working, then she can just cut back and play a bit more conservatively if she has to. Once again, right away, Graf puts her on the defensive when she's got that second serve to handle. She's the forehand back so hard, and as we all know, she can backpedal around it so quickly. And the second serve is punished severely. Would it, would the, as Manuela, as we can see, she can hit her first serve for fairly flat into the backhand corner, but her second serve, the way it's produced, will give Steffi the opportunity to run around and hit it on the forehand. Well, it, it sort of tends to sit up, doesn't it? Yeah, and she has a little bit of side spin, not the excessive top spin that will take her out of court. That one was pretty good, but even that one, Steffi could have gone around. and trails 3-2 in the opening set. Another sizzler from Steffi. One of the things that Graf does so well, she wrong foots her opponent off the forehand side and there's no way you can get back the ball off that forehand hit so hard. The only errors that are coming from Steffi are, we'd call them unforced errors, but they are not bad errors. They are only the, because she's going for so much. I mean, she's hitting the ball with tremendous confidence today. The first serve 30, is 15. tremendous. Also, she's hardly missed a first serve. Well, she started out in her first round match against Raj Nidifer in uh, one set was 7-5, and she was really not very pleased with her performance. It was 3-5, and five, but it was a very, very good match. Ross played well, but Graf really is quite a perfectionist.
Ugh. Game ball. Another quick one for Steffi Graf holding serve. Graf leads. And 14. she does move quickly. Not much she can do when uh, shot is set up like that. She just loves to hit that forehand. She could put it down the line or cross court. So used to making those winners. Oh. And speaking of winners. Another one. Love 15. No reply to that shot. It's a good serve, but uh, the forehand is hit so early there as you have to hit the cross court a little bit earlier. Love 30. Well, Virginia, we talk about Steffi Graf's forehand today, but I'm quite impressed as to how well she's hitting the backhand. She seems to be hitting it earlier. She is slicing a lot of them, but they're going very deep, and uh, they're staying very low. Well, I think her backhand is a, a very formidable shot. I don't think there's anything wrong with the slice either. Oh. Occasionally, it will go off a little bit, and uh, and then that causes problems. But basically, it gives everybody a, it does a lot of damage because it stays so low. Love 40. And that double fault was because she knew she couldn't survive if she just tossed in an easy second serve. That's a very good word to describe the situation for Manuela Maleva. Steffi Graf can now serve out the opening set. Five games, two. Fifteen love. And fifteen love. Steffi Graf. Serving absolutely brilliantly today. Not quite as much of a hesitation sometimes as there is. 92% first serves. Oh, take that. First ace of the match for Steffi. 39. So if we think this is only her second best weapon, the forehand being her biggest shot. Oh, I that was good too. So did she. It's going to bring her percentage right down, and it should have been an ace. It's like John Olerud for the Toronto Blue Jays. He misses a couple of her bats, and his average goes down. Everything working to perfection. And when she has a first set as good as this, she sometimes goes into a little bit of a lapse in the second set. So we see if we, she can sustain this. Game, first set cross, 6 2. That didn't take long, just under a half an hour. Steffi Graf winning the first set, moving very quickly. Bud Collins calls her Fraulein Forehand. We might call her Quick Draw McGraw. She, she moves out of the box. As soon as the umpire says time, she's ready to play.
about 15. Virginia, you have to feel a little bit sorry for Manuela Maleva Franier. She's playing really some very, very good tennis, but simply overmatched. She's hitting the ball ex exceptionally well. I mean, it's just that, as I said, how do you know how to end a point against uh, Steffi other than oh, with an error? Yeah. I mean, that was a good serve. What Manuela does so well against most of her opponents is she rolls her backhand out wide and then leaves the court with a big gap for her to hit a shot, another shot into. But she can't do that against Steffi just because of the onslaught. No, she's simply not in control of hardly any of the points. No, I mean, she really isn't. Even the points that she's won, is, she hasn't been in control of them. Look at that. I mean, when things go badly, they go badly. Oh, well. 15-30. I mean, this is an excellent shot right on the outside of the line. Steffi hit it okay, but it's a, very much the high part of the net there. Dribbled over. Desperate shot. Yep, very desperate. Trying to do something a little different. Looked up a bit, saw Graf steaming in. Couldn't keep the drop shot in the court. Double break point. tennis that I've seen Steffi play I mean it's really it's actually a joy to watch her when she's as good as this because she's almost perfect I have to wonder if she's thinking toward the US Open next month she always says that she thinks just about the event in hand at the moment and I, I believe her in that Very few and far 15, between yeah. that uh, Manuela Maleva Franier has had the time and the opportunity to hit a winner against Graf. She has been outstanding. Maleva Frenier forced Graf into a legitimate error. Yeah. Such a nice forehand Man Manuela has. Very compact. Oh. New tennis balls in this particular game may have floated that last backhand return of Maleva Frenier is out of court. 40, 30. That time the serve was just hit so hard she couldn't quite get around to return it. up a Cross service break in the second set having won the first six games to two in case you're just joining us pattern pretty much the same as the first set where Graf broke in the opening game and held serve and pretty well steamrollered over Manuela Maleva Frenier that's a good serve 
Aleva Franier, a semi-finalist here two years ago, had to default against her sister after losing the first set with a shoulder injury. First serve. Ended up being a rotator cuff problem, and she was off the tour for a couple of months after that. Well, her current singles ranking is number 12. At one stage, she was way up in the top five in the world. As high as number three, even. So this is a fine player. Oh! Barely. Yeah. 35. 30 love. She has not enjoyed this luxury often in this match. She won a tournament in Linz this year, and she was in the semifinals uh, of the U.S. hard courts in Stratton, but lost to Martin as Con Conchita Martin is there. So she's had an she's had an average year. It has not been her absolute best year. And as uh, you said, Don, she's uh, considering retiring. I mean, she says she's going to retire after the Australian Open next year. We believe it when we see it. Oh! 40 now. Backhand approach by Graf hit just a little bit late that time. Maleva Franier could breathe a small sigh of relief. Graf coming in. Just wide. Oh. Halt. Oh. 40, 30. That was the first, wasn't it? Steffi coming in on a very good second serve, but chipping and charging. That has to be so discouraging, Virginia, for Maleva Franier. She got to serve deep, as you said, and still didn't do her any good. Deuce. That doesn't help. By this stage in a tournament, somebody like uh, Steffi, or one of the top seeds, will have had enough matches under their belt to really know how the conditions are and to really be in full form. She nearly got that. That. Yeah. And that, uh, that certainly took a lot of courage for Aleva to move into the net then after squandering a 40-love lead. Now she has an ad point again. Steffi actually got to it. It didn't look as if she, there was any way she would get to it. Fault. Oh. Boy, that serve uh, almost hit the baseline. Oh. Deuce. And that's the problem. Second serve, the way it's produced, it's very hard for her to kick it out far enough to the backhand to keep Steffi honest on that. She can easily run around it. Fault! Advantage ground. Three double faults in this game. She's winning only, on the average, about one out of three points when she has to serve a second serve. Fault. Game Graf. Graf leads. Another uh, service Graf. break, and Steffi Graf is well in control. Well, that last game that Maleva Franier lost must certainly have discouraged her, leading 40 love and then ending up in a deuce situation, serving four double faults.
30 you know, when you're getting put under so much pressure on the court, you really begin to doubt yourself. Your whole game and confidence starts going into shreds. You know, you just feel uncoordinated and slightly embarrassed if you're in a Maleva situation such as this. first serve has just been going in so hard and deep. Tennis by the 14, number one 15. player in the world. This shot right here where she has to run back. I mean, this is a difficult shot to give a full blood swipe to. And not only does she do that, but she makes a virtual winner out of it. Oh, she missed one. 14, 30. They are few and far between. 40, 30. Graf won the first set, six games to two, and leads three love in the second set. Super play from Manuela. I mean, this was really the first rally that she was in command of for a long time. But she still had to play a lot of shots before she won the point. So a little bit of a hope for her here. Maleva Frenier shanked the forehand, getting it off the center of the racket. Graf with an advantage point. What? No, no, no. It's so funny, she's going to argue. I mean, that might have been out, it might have touched the line, but when you're playing as well as this, you really feel, you sort of feel hurt when somebody takes it, <laughs> takes it away. Game gone. Steffi Graf, two games away for making it to the finals again. And Natalie Tozia knows a lot about what Manuela Maleva Franier is going through. Natalie went 17 straight, was 16 straight matches, a loser to Steffi. The same thing with Manuela today, 16 straight matches she has lost to Steffi Graf. Brings up a point about the 16 and 17 straight. Uh, back in 1987, Pam Shriver was playing Chris Everett in the semifinals, and she was 0 and 18 and ended up beating her 
for the first time, 6-4 and 6-1, and then went on to defeat Zena Garrison in the final. So there is some hope, although perhaps not in this match. In tennis, it is one of the biggest problems. Oh, I think that might have been a fault. 15 on. It wasn't called a... In tennis, I think uh, because the psychological barrier gets erected by the number of matches or wins you have against another player, it's very hard to change that. It also happened uh, many years ago with Rod Laver and uh, the late Arthur Ashe. I think it was uh, 19 or 20 that Rod had won in succession over Arthur Ashe until Ashe finally won a, a big victory over him. It's quite an uphill battle when you're in that position. Try those things, can't you? 30 off. You can do almost anything you want, right? <laughs> but she's not happy with herself because uh, she missed it. It was very ambitious and almost trying to be too good. But when you're playing as well as this, you want to be perfect. This approach shot is good, but she didn't get herself enough into position. She sort of just hung around a little bit too much on the side of the court not to take away from the excellent passing shot. Nissan clear out sale. So many choices, so little time. With 5.8% financing on selected models, 24 hour roadside assistance, and the best warranty in the business. The 1993 Nissan clear out sale. Time is running out. A wholesome line of hair and skin care products. Rialto Naturals. Natural beauty that won't cost the earth. Exclusively at Shoppers Drug Mart. Oh, a little bungalow someplace. You know, your own backyard. Not renting. <laughs> right? A bank that understands how hard it is to save for a down payment. Now we can save for a house while using a credit card. Well, it's nice to know we're getting something out of it. I see a barbecue in the backyard. I see a swing set. You're not done. Steffi Graf, two games away from making quick work of Manuela Maleva Franier in this semifinal. Out. Oh, come on! Plus 15. We've had a few line calls gone astray this week. Well, Rod, it's so hard to call a ball hit on a hard court. It doesn't leave a mark like on a clay court. The balls by the players are being hit so hard. 
very difficult. And later this afternoon, we'll show you a feature on the new device in tennis that will help measure the ball and the line. Tennis goes space age. It's electronic line monitor. Love 30. Must be frustrating for Manuela Valeva. She really tried to do something good with that second serve and just hit it past the baseline. Someone who's playing as well as Graf, it forces you to do things you don't want to do out there. forehand misses in this game at least shows that Steffi Graf is human. 1540 double break point. Graf saving one with that good cross court backhand. There's Steffi Graf's mother Heidi Graf here in Toronto. Hopefully enjoying her daughter's play. Yes. She would have to be overjoyed today. Graf saving two break points. This fifth game of the second set. Graf won the first set six games to two. There was a little anxiety in that craft box yesterday against Natalie Tozia in the second set, first set two. Steffi bounced back. Game clock. And Steffi Graf holds serve. Five games to one. Demoralizing game for Manuela Maleva Franier to lose. She had Double break point at 15.40 and lost four consecutive points. Out. 15 up. An absolutely perfectly struck lob off the two-handed backhand side of Maleva Franier. And she is up 30 love. Yes. It's just simply too much power by Steffi Graf. Graf beat Manuela's sister here in 1990. The Malevas are quite the tennis family. Correct that by saying she beat her sister, Katerina, but it was in Montreal. It, Jerry Tennis Stadium. And that went three sets.
and finally out. Oh! Almost an ace by Maleva Franier. Approach forehand sets up a match point situation for the top seed and number one player in the world, Steffi Graf, 30-40. It's a tremendous match for Graf. I mean, she could really do no wrong. She played so well out there, served well, probably in the 90, 85, 90% range, hit the ball extremely hard. But on the other hand, Maleva Frenier did not play badly. She was playing some excellent tennis today, but really, she had no reply to the Graf forehand and the very steady Graf slice backhand. It's a good thing Steffi doesn't work on hourly wage <laughs> because she does not take long at all, especially today. Steffi's on her way to the championship final. She will speak with our Virginia Wade in a few moments when we come back to the 93 Matinee Limited International. Steffi Graf on her way to the championship. Makes you want to have a party. Makes you want to dance. Ottawa talks about oldies 1310. It's great music. It's the ultimate music of all time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. We have fun with it at work. It's moving, you know, in the car. It's fun. Um, backseat memories. I like that. Makes you feel romantic. <laughs> Women like that kind of thing. If I know the words, I can sing along. <laughs> you sing in the shower in the car. All oldies, all the time. Makes me feel good to hear those songs. The good times are back on oldies 1310. to me. I'm sorry to make you sick, especially since I am so, how you say, affectionate. You know you could take Claritin. It works fast on your itchy eyes, runny nose, and sneezing, or for extra allergic congestion. Claritin extra. Trust me! Claritin is the non-drowsy brand doctors recommend most. Who knows? You might be a cat person after all. Seventeen times Manuela Maleva Franier has played Steffi Graf. Seventeen times she has been on the losing end, and I don't know if she's ever faced an awesome force like she had today. Steffi Graf was on her game, and Manuela, as well as she played, just wasn't good enough. 6-2, six, 6-1 six, for a very, very quick semifinal victory. And joining Steffi Graf is our Virginia Wade. Virginia? Awesome and on form are absolutely the right words. Steffi, you were brilliant today. Well, I did feel very well. I mean, I felt like I could do anything with the ball that I really wanted to, and that's what happened. I didn't make many mistakes on my backhand or forehand. I just went for my shots. Did you like your forehand or your serve better? You, you know, your serve was up at almost 90 for, uh, percent for serves. You sure about that? Well, it was <laughs> until you got upset when you missed that one that was an ace, you thought. Uh, uh, but, um, yeah, my serve was... A lot better than yesterday. I mean, uh, a lot of good first serve, and even my second serve were really difficult for her to do anything. But um, I mean, overall, I don't, I don't, can't really criticize anything. In a way, it's uh, to me, it's a shame because the crowd is a little quiet because it wasn't much of a contest. But for you, is the satisfaction as good? Yeah, definitely. I mean, 
you, you don't really have often the feeling that you can do anything that you want. And when, once you got it, it's just great. I mean, you enjoy it and you just wish you could play longer. <laughs> Well, great playing. It's really a joy to watch you when you're playing that well. I wish you'd share a few of those forehands around for some of the rest of all of us poor tennis players. So let's go back.